What is going on guys, Pat on the shop, and tonight we're looking at the 305 Vortex heads. Uh, this is the video you guys have been asking for, wondering about these 305 Vortex, what the deal is. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and check these things out. So just like anything on the internet, there's a lot of different information back and forth of the 350 Vortex versus the 305 Vortex. Uh, there's some weird information about uh, the, the flow numbers, the difference in flow numbers, uh, the difference for valve size, difference back and forth, combustion chambers, everything. So let's try to straighten that out as best we can in this video. Uh, this, we're going to show you the difference between a 350 Vortec and a 305 Vortec. I got some flow numbers for you guys. I did a little bit of porting, nothing too crazy because I kind of wanted to see uh, what these things flow like with a little bit of porting done to them and uh, some interesting things you might find if you haven't looked at a set of 305 Vortex versus the 350s. So right here we have a casting number 520. Uh, Vortex had the last three digits being 520. Uh, common 305 Vortex heads are 059 and 520. And just like the 350 Vortex heads, it's 96 and up GMC pickups. Uh, so up until we went into the LS stuff. But this is the last hurrah of the small block Chevy uh, in a production vehicle. And you know what, GM did a really good job. One thing you'll notice right off the bat with the Vortec heads when you take a look at them uh, is something you might find very interesting and we're gonna zoom in on that and take a look. So taking a look inside this combustion chamber, there's a couple things you're gonna notice right away. The weirdest thing being on a 305 Vortec, they have what you call a little ski ramp in there. Uh, this is very similar to what you'd find on a swirl port head. So the earlier, the generation before this up to 95, the GM trucks had what was called swirl ports, like 193 swirl port heads. Um, they had a ramp in there like this. And what this does is promote swirl coming around the, the valve. This, this is something you won't find in a 350 Vortex head, but the 305 Vortex have this. And then what you'll notice with the, with the, three, the 305 Vortex heads, they are kind of a mix between a Vortec head and a swirl port head. Not only uh, you'll notice that that has this, the ramp in the intake port, but the combustion chamber is not heart shaped. Here's a little side by side view. As you can see, this is a 305 Vortec. You don't get that heart shaped combustion chamber. If we drop this down and take a look at the 350 Vortec, this is a 062 casting. As you'll get these on the 350, the 350 Vortex, the combustion chamber is a little bigger. Uh, this is a, um, a, about, there's advertised a 64 cc combustion chamber versus the 305 being a 58 cc. When I checked the 305, I was getting about 60 cc's uh, with a barrette. So uh, they're a little bit bigger. I found on this head particular in particular was a little bit bigger than what they advertise of 58 cc's. As far as valve sides go, uh, the 305 Vortex use a 1.84 intake valve and the same 1.5 uh, exhaust valve, both with the, the three angle seats and the back cut valves, just like the 30, sorry, the 350 Vortex. 350 Vortex versus 305. Uh, Intake ports, everything is basically the same size. Uh, the openings are all the same size. The uh, 305s use the same eight uh, bolt intake pattern, so nothing really changes there. The 305 Vortex have the same uh, issues as far as you're very limited with the stock springs uh, and guides, uh, what you can do with uh, lift. Uh, like you can see here, I fitted this uh, this head right here with a, one of my beehive spring kits so you can get a lot higher lift out of this without having to cut guides down. Um, this, th this actually 350 Vortec has the guides cut down already uh, but the valve guides are all worn out of this one so that's why I just use it as a dummy head now uh, until I put some new valve guides in there if I do that. Um, same thing, uh, press in studs that needs to be uh, to go if you decide you want to do some uh, heavier springs. And the 350 Vortec head flow on the exhaust side should be relatively similar. Same size valve and same uh, runner design. Doesn't have a ski ramp or anything like the intake. The intake is where things kind of change. So we'll take a look at the flow numbers. All right, so looking at the 305 Vortec, this is just the completely stock casting, nothing done to it, stock valve, stock everything. Uh, as you can see, this is why this is the best flowing 305 Vortec head that GM ever put out. And just remember that, just like the 350 was the Vortec head was the best um, production uh, head that GM ever put out for the small block 
Gen 1, the 305 is the same thing. It is the best flowing 305 head that GM put out, being the Vortec head. Uh, so you can see it's just like the same mid-lift, strong in the mid-lift, just like a 305, or three, sorry, a 350 Vortec, uh, but not quite as much flow, uh, being that it is a smaller valve. Uh, we peak out at about 217.9, so say 218 CFM, way up at uh, 600 lift. So realistically, uh, between uh, 211.8 and 217.9 in the 5 to the 600 lift area with uh, a strong mid lift. The exhaust, uh, similar to um, a 305, or sorry, a 350 uh, pattern, and we have a peak flow of 160, which is not too bad for a stock casting uh, without any port work. So let's compare this to a 350 Vortec head and uh, see how it holds up. All right, so there's a lot going on in this chart, uh, but I thought I would throw the 350 Vortex and the Mexican casted 3 vor Vortex here, 350 Vortex, everything being stock. Uh, the Mexican 350s do have their 906 with the hardened seats, uh, so the two angle. So you'll notice down here uh, the, the difference in flow, but we're gonna talk about the intakes first. So yellow, we have the 350 Vortex. This is a stock casting off a truck. So uh, actually I think it was a 97 Yukon or something, these ones uh, that I've used. Um, but the original Vortex flowed the best, but we're more prone to cracking. And if uh, again, if you've checked out my other videos, I've talked about that, my uh, Vortex versus Mexican Vortex video. But here, I just did this for comparison's sake. There is yellow, the 350 Vortex, green, the Mexican Vortex, and in blue here are the 305 Vortex. So as you can see, there is a flow difference uh, where, especially up top, where the bigger valve does help, and uh, we're only uh, we're hitting 241 CFM versus 217, so we're 20-something CFM difference. But not the end of the world. Uh, you can... You can tell it's still a good flowing head, the 305 Vortex, uh, but here, you know, you almost have a 30 CFM spread at 500 lift, and but the they get kind of closer and closer as we go down, and and if you've uh, done any sort of um, comparison in heads, uh, the the mid lift 300 400 thou. Is, is, is quite important as the valve hits that spot twice. So uh, if you're looking here, there's about a 20 CFM difference, and then you're talking 176 to 188, so 12 CFM difference here. Uh, so maybe not as bad as you guys think, uh, and uh, let's compare that to some porting, done some porting on the 305 Vortec heads, and uh, see if how well they respond. So here's something I wanted to try, you guys might find interesting. So that ramp you see in the intake runner, I decided to see what would happen if I just removed that ramp and basically just make it look like a, a 350 port without you know touching anything else really. And this is the results you get. So the exhaust, don't worry about that, it's all the same. But uh, the this is the intake with the ramp removed. So as you can see, it actually, appears to have maybe a slight effect 3 CFM or so up top uh, one or uh, around 400 lift and then it kind of diminishing uh, maybe one or so CFM everywhere else but uh, it was just interesting I thought maybe it would have more of an impact than that uh, so I was kind of surprised uh, that that's all it did so let's take a look when we do a little bit more porting and open up the throat a little bit. All right, so here is what happens when you do a little bit of porting on a 305 Vortex. Again, I didn't do, do too crazy. If you go back to my previous video, basically what I did is just open up the throat to uh, 85 to 90% of the 1.84 valve on the intake, and then just blend it all in and, and brown the guide off. That's all I really did. I did remove the ski ramp on this one too. Um, and this is the results I got and it's not huge flow difference uh, you know here's a bit a little bit of a jump 176.4 at 182.5 but that's decent that's in an important area uh, almost no change at 400 and then at the top it kind of kicks up a little bit so not huge gains uh, from what I did there uh, I wonder now if maybe I should have left the ramp and played with the throat 
Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of porting on 305 Vortec heads because uh, most guys are not asking for them. I b basically just did all this because uh, you guys have been asking about it and it was for my own curiosity as well. So uh, this is what I got. But again, it's always a positive result when you do some porting and you really don't lose any flow anywhere else. Oftentimes when guys port, mostly over port, you'll kill the lower lift, uh, you know, under 400 thou you can easily kill it. So I didn't do any real um, intake runner porting. This is all just a throat port and then a little bit of valve unshrouding. But being uh, that you have smaller valves, uh, valve shrouding is not so much an issue in the combustion chamber. Um, but this is the results we got. Uh, I would, you know, it might be interesting to put a 194 valve in a set of 305 Vortec heads and see how it flows, and then maybe a 1.6 valve on the exhaust. But you can see just like the, 30, uh, the 350 Vortec heads, uh, the exhaust responds well to some porting. I did the same thing. I did a little bit a more of a, the, the throw port and a little bit more of the runner porting like I did on the, the previous video with the 350 Vortec heads, and uh, got good response all throughout the the whole lift the lift area as well so not a bad set of heads really uh 224 cfm peak uh, 166 on the exhaust that's a decent set of heads uh when you compare it to any other stock boards i had and even a small uh the smaller aftermarket heads uh this would be a well suited head for a smaller uh say like a 327 uh any smaller um small block this is a this will be a great head great res responsive head uh and lots of torque so uh it might be an option for you guys that are looking at vortex heads for you know 307 whatever you got um or if you're building up a 305 you can stick it through to a 305 vortex head you do have that smaller combustion chamber so uh keeping uh, the um, the compression ratio up is uh, is a little easier uh with the with the 305 vortex heads so what do you guys think? The 305 Vortec, was it what you expected? Is it better than you expected? Uh, maybe you were surprised by the difference of the, the intake runner without the ski ramp versus the 350. Uh, combustion chamber different. I'm actually surprised they, they did that with the combustion chamber because a lot of the power with the Vortex is in the combustion chamber. So kind of surprising uh, in my opinion. Talked about in my other video, we're gonna do a Help Me Build It series coming up where I'm gonna let you guys decide on what parts we're gonna put on uh, 355 that we're gonna build. Uh, we're, I'm gonna let you guys pick the cam, I'm gonna let, let you pick the heads, maybe you guys will pick the 305 Vortec heads, we'll do all the tricks, we'll do a beehive spring kit, pour them out, uh, and uh, get them all freshened up, and then put them on the dyno, put, them on, put it on the motor, build a motor, put it on the dyno, see how much power we can make. Maybe we'll make some surprising power with these 305 Vortec heads, or maybe you guys will pick a set of 30, 350 Vortec heads, or, I got some aluminum heads. I got a bunch of stuff. So it's going to be interesting, but I would like maybe to build, maybe we'll have to build a couple motors, and one of them being some 305 Vortec heads on a 350 and see and see how well that works. Maybe everyone's leaving these in the junkyard looking for the 350 Vortec heads for no reason when you can get a set of these um, for fairly cheap because everyone seems to be uh, just passing them up. So. Uh, please like and subscribe guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video uh, Feel free to ask me any question below about the 350 Vortec heads or 305 Vortec heads that I uh, forgot to answer in this video uh, Anyway guys, thank you